Coming up, Raceview Network visits Prairie Meadows for full coverage of four regionals in the Bank of America Racing Challenge. Plus, the championship division comes into focus with sharp winners in Iowa, California, and Alberta. Five divisions comprise the Bank of America Racing Challenge. Two- and three-year-olds, distance runners, fillies and mares, and championship three-year-olds and up take part in regional qualifying races across three countries. A victory, or strong showing, in a regional puts a horse in the graded final for their division. Those are on championship night, October 24th, at the Downs at Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm Jim Byers. Welcome to the AQHA Racing Challenge Update. We have plenty of regional challenges upcoming. And for the quartet of races at Prairie Meadows in mid-August, Raceview Network was on hand for full coverage. Let's begin by looking at the top contenders in the Attaquan Prairie Meadows Derby Challenge. A political J. Julia has made the Grade 2 Heritage Place Derby and the Iowa Double Gold Derby this year. She's the 6-5 favorite to notch her first 2020 win here. Astronomical was the beaten favorite in the Iowa Double Gold Derby, following a smashing trial win and a Remington allowance victory. She's in post 11 for this 400-yard test. Off and running. Summer's dynasty broke out the best day. Political J. Julia there to sizzling chick Corona. Here's Astronomical running a big one way from the extreme outside. And Mata Hoppel is getting into it as well from the inside. So it's inside and outside. Now a driving finish. Mata Hoppel or Astronomical. Astronomical on the outside. Astronomical breaks on top and never looks back under Jorge Torres. Defeating Mata Hoppel and Diva's first move. Now four for eight, Astronomical is a Texas bred owned by MC Stucks and trained by Stacy Charette Hill. Ruidoso Downs offered its Ataquan Derby Challenge the same day as Prairie Meadows and looked to the inside runners in this desperately close finish. It's wide open, Cherokee Senator inside, Silken Stilettos between his Lucador, it's a three-way blanket finish. From between horses, number two, Luchador, gets his nose on the wire just in time to outbob the three Silken Stilettos with Cherokee Senator on the inside third. Trained by John Steinbow for DP Cattle Company, LLC, Luchador is a South Dakota bred, first time stakes winner, ridden by Raul Valenzuela. Hello, I'm Selena Molina, singer, actress, animal lover, and racehorse owner. Few things give me greater joy than to watch them do what they truly love, to compete at the racetrack. And like thousands of other quarter horse owners, I respect and love my horses and give them the best of care. They're like family. Come see the world's fastest athletes at a racetrack near you. I might just see you there. This is the AQHA Racing Challenge Update, powered by American Quarter Horse Association. The early stages of qualifying in the ARC Distaff Division have been dominated by trainer Jason Olmsted. At Prairie Meadows, he qualified a filly with a family history of success in the challenge program. And at Ruridoso, he again unveiled the likely favorite in the Grade 1 ARC Distaff Final. That's Linder 16, already a qualifier from Canterbury Park, wiring this field at 400 yards. Deep stretch Linder 16, Linder 16 wins the distaff. Ridden by Berkeley Packer, Linder 16 doubles up on qualifying victories in this division and boosts her career bankroll to nearly $638,000. Owned by Tom Maher and Richard Tobin, Linder 16 is a graded stakes winner for Jason Olmsted. Grace is a good reason run second, with Jess B. Glory third. To Prairie Meadows, where another Olmsted pupil, a political mogul, is the heavy favorite in its grade three Arc Distaff Challenge. She's six for six in the money at Prairie, and recently ran a strong third in the Canterbury Challenge. Stepping into tougher company is LOL, a Colorado bred who's placed in two state-bred stakes at Arapahoe. Uriel Cervantes rides for Robert Johnson. The Polar Vortex is another Olmsted filly. 
She's run two solid races off an eight-month layoff and is a half-sister to 2017 BOA championship winner, the Fiscal Cliff. The Polar Vortex got into stride early on, has about a half-length lead, LOL to the outside, and uh, on the inside, beginning to move up is a political mogul. The Polar Vortex has the lead, LOL with a strong rally to the outside. Here's the wire. It looked like the Polar Vortex. The Polar Vortex opens up early and just holds off LOL by a nose with a political mogul third. Jesus Salazar, the winning jockey, a special win for him after a year-long injury rehab. It's my first takes with my second goal accomplished, thanks to God and to everybody that has been there for me and for my daughter, most of all, for keeping me strong. Keeping me strong and not giving me the option to, to quit. An Iowa homebred for owner Thomas Lepic, the Polar Vortex is an eight-time winner and earns a return trip to Albuquerque where she was unplaced in last year's Arctis Staff Championship. Olmstead could have a strong hand in this year's Arctis Staff. Well, she ran a huge race. She's always a big-time gate lever. She left there running a day, and, and usually about 350 yards are coming to her and catch her, but tonight she just kept on running. It's been a, overall a really good day for her. Her big day, Lender 16, she, she ran very impressively at Rio Dosa and went a stake today, so it's, it's pretty exciting. Regional challenges in the John Deere Juvenile Division always pick up this time of year. These two-year-olds go 350 yards for a spot in the grade two final. At Los Alamitos, much of the focus was on the undefeated gray, a political patty. But the six, Trace Jess, had other ideas. A political patty from Trace Jess, Royal Racing, Harry Delilah Rose. Trace Jess has gone past a political patty, springs the big upset. Third behind a political patty in one of two trials for this. Trace Jess turns it around in the regional challenge to draw off under Jonathan Roman. Royal Racy Perry was up for second over a political pet. Now one for three in his brief career. Trace Jess is an Arizona bred colt trained by Roman Figueroa for owner Marco Antonio Hernandez. Signs of a blue moon qualified fastest for the John Deere Prairie Meadows Juvenile Challenge and this Olmstead trained filly went off the 8-5 to five favorite from the inside. Quorum came out well, Synergize did also. Pretty darn quick is getting into stride. Patrick Dash, FDD, Princess, and Providence way to the outside, but it's in the middle here, and it is a Quorum. Quorum and Pretty Darn Quick. Pretty Darn Quick and Quorum hit it together in a close photo. At the finish, heads are all that separate the top three as number six, Pretty Darn Quick on the outside. Rallies to beat the five quorum with synergized third. Owned by trainer John Hamus and the estate of Thomas Bradbury, Purdy Darn Quick is an Oklahoma bred gelding who was a romping trial winner in the fourth fastest time. Ramiro Garcia, the jockey. Back to Rui Doso for its John Deere Juvenile Challenge. Number one, Jess the Lady gets out quickest but runners toward the outside eventually go on by. Quickly in stride is Jess the Lady from the inside. Then it's Graceful Paradise from the center. Bad Monkey on the outside is Isa Super Freak. Isa Super Freak comes on in the center is Bad Monkey. Bad Monkey, Isa Super Freak. Bad Monkey, good winner. Bad Monkey turned in a gutsy trial win for this and comes back with another game effort to earn a spot in the John Deere Juvenile Championship under Benito Baca. Owned and trained by Dean Fry. Bad Monkey is a California bred gelding with two wins and four starts. Isa Super Freak is second with just the lady third. More racing is coming up from the championship division, which featured strong winners from three regions. Hello, I'm Selena Molina, singer, actress, animal lover, and racehorse owner. Few things give me greater joy than to watch them do what they truly love, to compete at the racetrack. And like thousands of other quarter horse owners, I respect and love my horses and give them the best of care. They're like family. Come see the world's fastest athletes at a racetrack near you. I might just see you there. The Grade 1 Bank of America Challenge Championship is the headliner on the big program featuring all five division finals. A few strong contenders for this year's race went postward in mid-August. 
At Evergreen Park in Grand Prairie, Alberta, number five Strip Stake increased his lead at every stage of this 440-yard test, drawing off by two lengths. Here comes Strip Stake towards the wire. He's going to win. For the second year in a row, this California bred wins the Evergreen Challenge. He scores handily here over Honor the Fast Man and Scarface Judge. Trained by William Leach for owner Charles Stojan, Strip Stake ran a competitive fifth in last year's BOA Championship at Albuquerque. He's an 11-time winner from 19 starts, ridden by Ricardo Moreno. Here's another romping win in a BOA Championship challenge. John Carter Cash on the inside wallops this field of older rivals in a grade two at Los Alamitos. John Carter Cash has given them the flip and is blitzing the opposition. The three-year-old conquers elders and a new distance by three legs. The Oregon bred John Carter Cash is a three-year-old making a nice adjustment to Southern California after starting his career in the Northwest. Ruben Lozano in the irons for trainer Valentin Zamudio and owner Juan Ramos Durantes. Kissed by an eagle runner-up with Finney and Faith third. Back to Altoona, Iowa for the BOA Prairie Meadows Championship Challenge. The seven-year-old Three Olives and Smoke is back for another swing at this grade two, which he won in 2019. He most recently ran third behind Danger in the Canterbury Regional. Charlie's Fury is among the most consistent high-level horses in training. He's been in the money in 13 of 14 career tries, many of those in graded company for trainer Michelle Hurdle. Odds on favorite Eagles Fly Higher has become a sensation in 2020, winning two graded races at Remington Park and recently giving Danger all he could handle in the BOA Canterbury Park Regional. Trained by Casey Black, he has post three for this. They're all in the gate. Up and running, Charlie's Fury Eagles fly higher the first two ways. A blue fan charges the challenge for the lead. Then we come to Fast Flash, scored three olives in smoke, has about two lengths to make up, faster than Hasta. And DF Lord Garvin trails Eagles fly higher, has a big lead, might be insurmountable now as Eagles fly higher, go on to win and wins clearly. That's another scintillating performance from Eagles fly higher. An Oklahoma bred four-year-old Colt owned by Darling Farm. Trained by Casey Black, who took over his training this spring. Eagles Fly Higher ups his 2020 earnings to 124000 plus and his career tally to more than $430,000. Christian Escada rode him for the first time here. Casey told me to keep after him, you know, because the last 40 yards are, are hard for him. But we were training him pretty pretty good, I think, and, and, and it, it paid off. Yeah. It's a nice, nice horse. It feels good to be on a... And a racehorse like that. Charlie's Fury is second, with He's a Blues Man third. The AQHA Racing Challenge Update, powered by American Quarter Horse Association. That's all for now. Coming up on the next edition of this series, we'll add in challenge races from Emerald Downs and Albuquerque and we'll revisit the distance division. I'm Jim Byers, thanks for watching, and please look for us next time on the AQHA Racing Challenge Update.